Hi, I'm Kat and welcome to Kat's Cooking Corner. Today we are going to be making a no sugar apple pie. For this recipe you will need pie shells, cornstarch, cinnamon, frozen unsweetened apple juice concentrate, and apples. You will also want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Okay, I am going to actually be making two pies, so I'm doubling the recipe today. But the first thing you need to do is get a small bowl and whisk together. Normally it'd be three tablespoons, but since I'm doubling it, it will be six tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm going to throw an apron on today. <clears throat> Already making a mess. Okay, and normally it would be one tablespoon of cinnamon, but again, I'm doubling it, so two tablespoons of cinnamon. And normally it would be one third of a cup, but again, since I am doubling this, I will need two thirds of a cup of the apple juice concentrate, which I've already microwaved this for about three minutes to make sure it's good and thawed. Whisk this up, get all blended together nicely. And then we want to set this aside. Our next step is to prepare our apples. Recipe says you need approximately six cups. I have never went by that measurement. I just start putting in apples. So I don't actually measure it out. I have an entire bag here. This is a well, I think it was a five pound bag, but it does not tell me so. And everyone has their own way of preparing apples. My way is simply to quarter them with a big knife. <laughs> then I have take a little knife, get the core out, 
om det vill klara av den. Oops. I'm really not the greatest at peeling them. And cut it up and put it into the pot. Another way you can do it is to peel them first, which I'm not the greatest at peeling, but old superstitions that if you can peel an apple in one continuous strand you know get the manage to peel it without the pill breaking and then you drop the pill in the floor behind you and look back it's supposed to take the shape of the initial of your soulmate I have never managed to get an apple pill to come off all in one piece so I can't tell you if that's legit or not. <laughs> and then again, you just simply whoops, quarter it. and cut out the core. If you have an apple core, that works even better, but I don't have one, so. And of course, problem with buying bagged apples is you're going to have a few that have bad spots. You just simply cut the bad spots out, throw that away, and it's still usable. Another bad spot. Sometimes you have to cut a little deeper, cut more of it out, but most of the time it's just basically surface and you can get rid of it real easily. Okay, I got a little curious and went ahead and measured, and yeah. My, I've always figured it, each apple is about one cup, and that's about what it comes out to, so that, that's a good rule of thumb, basically one apple per cup of apple you need. Okay, I only have two more apples left here that I need to peel and core, so... And get this finished up and then I will dice up the apple and put it into the pot. Oops. 
And a lot of times, I'm not doing it today just because I'm trying to do this video, but a lot of times I will actually take and I will separate the cores from the pills whenever I'm doing this. And I will save the apple pills to eat later. Turn that and clean it up here. <laughs> there. Okay. Now we just want to take and cut the apple up into little bite sized chunks. Dot all of these and toss them into the pot. Okay, once you have all your apples diced, then you pour them all into the pan here. Oops. And try not to spill them in the floor, which is what I'm doing. Okay, once you have all your apples diced up, want them, you know, pretty much bite-sized, then you want to take the rest of the apple juice concentrate, pour it in, Light your stove and let this simmer. So we need to get it up to a boil first. Ouch. There. So I have it on high heat, very high heat right now, I'm trying to get it up to a boil. Once we get it to a boil, then we want to turn the heat down to a medium low and let it simmer for 10 minutes. Still waiting for it to boil. Okay, we finally have it to somewhat of a boil. So we're going to turn the heat down. To medium low and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. OK, 
Okay, while the apples are simmering, we're going to go ahead and prep our pie crust. For this one, I'm actually using um, ready-to-bake to rolled-up pie crust. Nothing fancy, nothing spectacular. In another video for another type of pie, I might show you how to make a homemade pie crust, but this is what I have today. <laughs> And sometimes these work really, really well. Other times they're a real pain. So. Since I'm doing two pies, I'm going to go ahead and get out both the bottom crusts. These seem to be doing fairly well. They're not breaking apart or anything, so this should work fine. One pie is for a friend, so it gets a little disposable metal pie plate. And kind of, you can do whatever you want with the edges of the pie crust. Sometimes I try to do little decorative things. Today I'm just really trying to get it to just kind of lay, lay there. Still going to look a little decorative, but not anything super fancy. Thing is, this pie plate is actually smaller than what I needed, but there. I have that one. Now let's get the second one ready. Yes, I have the cookie sheet out because I really don't have a very great work area, so it's just easier to clean up the cookie sheet than to try to do stuff on this actual shelf that I use for a table. <laughs> okay, here's the second one. I'm going to try to get the eye shell into the corners there and then you can work on the crust. In this case the pie plate is bigger so there's not as much overage hanging over the sides so it's kind of smash it down everything will be good. Okay. Now, I'm going to set these aside so I'm ready for them. I'm going to walk over here and stir the apples. I have a timer set, so the timer hasn't gone off yet, so still got a little bit more time to cook them. But want to give them a nice little stir. Then we are going to finish prepping our pie shells. So since this is an apple pie, I'm going to try to do the latest pipe top shelf.
actually on one pie. I'm probably going to do the latest. On the other one, I might do something else. We'll see. So I'm simply going to take a pizza cutter. Best thing ever for this. And just start slicing about half inch strips. And if they're not perfect, that's okay. It'll still taste the same, so. Okay. Of course, the end pieces are going to be too small, so let's go ahead and take and put them to a nice little bowl here, and we will use that for something else. Okay, after 10 minutes, we want to take the mixture we made in the beginning with the cornstarch. Give it another little whisk here. And pour it in. much of it out of the bowl as possible. And then we want to stir this. We want to continue simmering until it thickens up. Most of the time, it doesn't take it very long to thicken up, so. I don't know if you can see this, but yeah. It has pretty much thickened up. So now what we need to do is put the apple mixture into the pie shells. better spoon for this and an oven mitt because this pan is hot. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit into each pie shell. Let's try to even it out. made a mess. Actually, a little concerned that I wouldn't have quite enough since I only had 10 apples and it called for 12 cups, but I think it they both look pretty full, so let's move the apple filling around. Nice, smoothed out there. Put the top crust on. Oh my 
got one prepared here, but like I said, I'm going to try to do the latest style. So. Don't know how well this will turn out. You can come as close together, as far apart as you wish. all the ends make sure they're on there good I'm gonna try to make the it just seem a little more decorative and go for it That's one of them. Now let's see about the other one here. We do the same thing with it. Let's get the other. Just a minute here. This one, I'm gonna try to. I'm actually gonna use a few pieces since I wasn't really across on this one. A few, pe few pieces of what was left over on the strips. Build up a little bit of the crust on this one. Oops. I'm trying to stay out of the way of the camera, and I'm not doing a very good job here. <laughs>
bigger pie, of course, is one that I'm keeping for home. So if it doesn't turn out really nice and pretty, it's not a big deal. Not saying I wouldn't like for it to, but if it doesn't, I'm not going to be as concerned. My husband will eat it any way it goes. <laughs> start watching his blood sugar so I have to do things that are a little I guess you'd say diabetic friendly he's not diagnosed as diabetic but it runs in his family so he has started watching his blood sugar more so. okay now we have both of those ready to that point I have plenty of dough left over here so what I'm going to do is take a leaf shaped cookie cutter and cut out a couple leaves. Just kind of decorate it up. It's Christmas time, you can do snowflakes, you can do, you know, just about anything you want with it, but this is fall, so I'm doing leaves. <laughs> okay, once you get to this point, you want to cook these for about 45 minutes in your oven. Apple pie is a really great dessert, especially in the fall when apples are harvested. It, it's great by itself. It's great with whipped topping or ice cream, just however you want to serve it. And this particular recipe has no added sugar. It is, of course, going to have sugar because apples naturally have sugar. But it is better for people with diabetes or who are just, for whatever reason, trying to watch their blood sugar levels. Thank you for watching today's episode of Cat's Cooking Corner. Hope you enjoyed the recipe, and if you would like to see more, please subscribe. You may have noticed that the name of the segments I've been posting are Cat's Cooking Corner. The name of the actual channel is Cat's Domestic Corner. That's because I plan on adding things other than just cooking segments at some point. My question is, what would you like to see? I can show you pretty much anything, you know, domestic, <laughs> um, different ways to fold towels, um, how to fold your bed sheets, you know, stuff like that. I could show you how to do some simple sewing crocheting techniques, just whatever you would like to see, comment below and let me know. And I will try to start a segment dedicated to that.